Beginning about 15 years ago, there's one property of human intelligence that scientists got very interested in, and it's called having a theory of mind. And the, the best way to describe it is to describe a classic experiment with human children. So imagine you're sitting around and you're telling stories with your younger sister. And you tell them a story, say, well, here's Sally and Sally has a bowl that she really likes and she's gonna put it in the basket, which is right there in front of her. And she hides the ball in the basket. And here's Anne, Sally's friend, and they're playing together. And Sally then says, I've gotta to go to the bathroom, so I'm gonna leave the room. And when she leaves the room, Anne takes the ball out of the basket and puts it in a box, a green box that she's got next to her. Now Sally comes back into the room and she wants to play with the ball. And supposing you ask your sister, where is Sally gonna look for the ball? If your sister is three years old, she'll say, in the box, because she knows that's where the ball is. And a three-year-old has knowledge, of course, but can't imagine that other people have knowledge that's different from her own. So if she knows the ball's in the box, everybody knows the ball's in the box. And that's because a three-year-old doesn't do what scientists call attributing mental states to other people. She doesn't think that other people have thoughts, desires, beliefs, knowledge. Um, so she answers the question incorrectly. As children get older, it, it happens pretty quickly, four, five or so, um, they go through the same test and you ask them the same question and they begin to say, well, Sally's gonna look for the ball in the basket because that's where she thinks it is. And a five or six year old will say, she'll look for the ball in the basket because she thinks incorrectly that the ball is still in the basket, but I know it's been moved into the box. So by six, children have the ability to uh, attribute mental states to others. They have what we call a theory of mind. And we call it a theory because there's nothing about the other person that shows that they're thinking. Thoughts are hidden. We don't see them. The only way we can imagine that thoughts are there and that they cause behavior is if we have a theory about the way the world works. People have thoughts and the thoughts cause them what, what to do. And of course, humans are theory of mind just pervades all of our life. We're forever making a distinction between what people do and what they think we do. I mean, think about your relationships with other people. Yeah, she was nice to me yesterday, but does she really like me? Or I think that he doesn't know that you really do like him. These things can get incredibly baroque where you're attributing theory of mind back and forth to three other people. And it's what we do in plays, it's what we do in our daily life all the time. But it's not something we're born with. You've got to learn it.